Okay, we've got a lot of questions to get to. The next one comes from uh, Charlotte Regan. How justifiable do you think it was for the federal government to blame a lack of predicted revenue for delaying their anticipated increase in foreign aid? Well, the key thing I see is the incredibly positive impact of foreign aid. Uh, if we look at how we're saving children's lives, uh, getting reproductive health tools out to women, uh, where they, they choose to have less children voluntarily, uh, improving seeds so that farmers can grow enough for their kids to eat, uh, to have the nutrition to succeed at school. It's phenomenal. And yet, because these programs are far away, a lot of people don't recognize the impact of uh, what even 0.5% can do. And so Australia is to be thanked for the fact that its aid budget has gone up. Uh, and in a sense, the sooner you get to 0.5%, the bigger impact you're going to have. So I was disappointed at the delay. Uh, but the trend is still pointing in the right direction. We've, uh, we've heard your uh, diplomatic uh, answer to this a few times today, <laughs> but I understand in truth you were pretty angry when you heard that Australia was shirking uh, its promise to actually do this. Is that true? No, I, I don't tend to get angry. I don't think that's very constructive. Uh, I think if people could all visit, uh, it would make a difference, and that's why those who do get a chance need to come back and witness it and make, pe make people feel good about what's being done. Uh, certainly, the world economy is such that all these development budgets are under pressure. In fact, you know, the deficits and, and debt levels in other countries are, are very, very high. And yet, some of them, uh, like the UK, are continuing to make very significant increases, moving up, in their case, to 0.7%. And it's always significant when uh, someone of your stature comes to persuade our leaders uh, behind closed doors. Now, uh, you're known as a mathematical genius. Uh, given Australia's electoral math, how important was it that you came to see Tony Abbott? Uh, well, I'm not a pollster, uh, and I saw uh, both parties at length today. But, you, but we know you can add up, and uh, so can most of the people in this room. And uh, the, the, very, the strong likelihood is he'll be the Prime Minister by the end of this year. So I'm wondering, behind closed doors, did you get a commitment from him? Well, I spoke as somebody with expertise. I'm not a, an Australian voter, so I don't get to ask uh, for things. But these are things where I've taken you know, the money uh, that I've earned and decided to put to get behind them. And so whenever you have a management mentality, hearing from a business type person why they think this is the very best way to spend money, I think you know, a little bit you, you realize, hey, it's not soft thinking. It's not just that these are sad causes. It's because of the real change. And was he receptive to your arguments? He, he couldn't have been nicer. <laughs> yes, OK. <laughs> He's a politician. <laughs> um, <laughs> the next he, question. Well, I didn't ask him to write a check or anything. <laughs> Perhaps next time you could. All right. Well, uh, well the, the, go the government in power did announce today an, an extra $80 million for polio, which is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. OK. Thank you very much.